The Boston Celtics have now taken two games in a row after going down 0-3 on the road, and things are starting to get really interesting in the East. Their process on both ends of the floor has just been so impressive in these last two outings, and while there are so many different things you can point to as catalysts, the two-way play of their all-defensive guard Derek White can't possibly go unnoticed. Defensively, White's best utilized at the point of attack. Notice how his head is on a swivel as he positions himself to prepare for a screen, jabbing at the ball and taking a perfect angle to not only avoid contact, but also cut off Jimmy's drive, absorbing that shoulder bump to hold his position and save the ball from going out of bounds. His screen navigation is as good as it gets, and Bede actually steps out while setting this one, yet White is still able to make himself skinny over the top touches the ground while in stride to keep his balance, and recovers just in time to alter a shot at the rim. It's not a product of incredible athletic gifts, but just perfect technique. He ups the ball pressure so that he can stay attached over the top of a screen, and Vincent rejects it to catch him over playing the right side. But his footwork is sharp and allows him to change directions, getting back in front of the ball to contest a step back jumper. Here's another one where he gets skinny over the top to stay attached to the ball, and with Al Horford back in that drop, Robinson thinks he has the pull-up three, but White's also really good in rear pursuit. He overplays Lowry's left side, giving up a drive right, and Horford contains the ball just long enough for him to get back in the play and deflect a pass to the corner. His ability to both avoid screens and play from behind help him as a chaser away from the ball, just phasing right around Bam as if he doesn't even exist to contest Max Struess as he fires off of movement. This time it's two different screens that he has to dodge, and instead of staying attached to Struess, he finds an angle right in between them to cut off the path and run him off the perimeter into help down low, where Horford's able to take away a drive to the cup by swiping down. And even when he is blindsided by a screen, he offers some switchability. Look at how hard he works to keep Bam as far away from the basket as possible, not giving up any sort of pass or chance at an offensive rebound. This is a result of playing physical while having a real strong lower body. Love tries to back him down, but can't really make up much ground and settles for a turnaround fadeaway. Love's had White on quite a few switches in this series, and to this point really hasn't had any success going to work in the low post. And my counter to anyone bringing up age would be Joel Embiid, getting low and up into his airspace to make him uncomfortable as he goes to a step back midi instead of attacking the paint. In a cross matching situation he's faced with Bam Adebayo moving his feet well to not give up any driving lane, while Tatum makes a real high level play as a helper to force a turnover. White's really good in these perimeter ISO situations, sliding in front of Jimmy's initial drive, swiping down at the ball as he spins, and matching him vertically to not give up a finish. He's not the quickest lateral athlete, so on many of these plays, you'll see his matchup actually touching the paint but it's what happens when it does get there that makes him special. Butler gets the step without much difficulty, and there's no rim protector in position to help, so he stays attached to the hip, patiently waiting for a finish attempt so that he can jump in front of the rim and send it away. He doesn't have a ton of length, so this is all timing and a pretty springy vertical leap that enables him to protect the rim better than any other guard. In semi-transition, Harden does a great job of getting around him and splitting between he and Rob Will, but he times his attack of the ball perfectly. This one's just a straight up fast break and he's the last line of defense, positioning himself really well to take away the middle and opening up his body as he takes off to give himself an angle at a block. Boston's in a scramble here, which gives Martin a free runway to the paint with just White waiting for him, sliding his feet to stick with a Euro step across the lane as he saves two points. His rotations as a helper, especially at the nail, are on point. In the pick and roll, he roams way over to not give Bam space on a mid-range jumper while giving Rob time to recover to the ball, leading to a much tougher finish attempt. Horford comes over to double Bam in the paint, which gives Butler space to get downhill, but White slides to the elbow and strips away a drive. 
On a flyby, Horford has to slide in front of Duncan Robinson, which frees up Bam in the middle but White rotates over from the wing to quickly take away that window of opportunity. And again, it's all about perfect timing. He waits for Embiid to start his attack before coming over to double, so that he's not expecting a second body as he spins back towards the middle. This time he's serving as the low man in the weak side corner. Butler draws an extra body on a drive, which leaves him zoning up two different shooters, first closing out to the wing as he expects the pass, before recovering back to the corner to get a hand up on the three ball. It's easy to see why he's regarded so highly as a defender, just having so much versatility both on and off the ball as he's played a massive role in Boston's defense over the past two seasons and he's also found his way as an impact player within their system on offense. Before we get into that though, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics. They also offer various different talent grades, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using White's perimeter defense as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to lock down, along with how he stacks up against his peers. By signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested. And with that being said, let's take a look at how White adds value on offense. As is typically the case with a supporting player on a contending team, he spends most of his time away from the ball, and he's got a real high feel for where and when to move, pulling in an offensive rebound and immediately lobbing it up top for Rob Will. As Horford attempts a corner three, White crashes from the weak side to not only grab a board, but put it back up in mid-air plus the foul. This time it's Horford who secures a second chance opportunity, and White floats into open space near the elbow, where he can dive right between two defenders for an easy catch and finish. Just watch him for this entire possession, first lifting into open space above the break, before cutting hard at the middle of the floor, only to cut towards the baseline as if looking to set a cross screen for Rob, and continuing his jog to the outside for a great look from three. He's been scorching hot from beyond the arc, in this series alone hitting more than 58% of his threes at decent volume, and in the playoffs overall, just under 48. And it's this improved shooting that allows him to add real value when spotting up. Horford slips an off-ball screen, which draws the attention of Struess down low, leaving White in the corner for an automatic triple. As long as he's hitting like this, the defense has to respect it. As Smart drives with White in the corner, this is Bam's rotation to slide down and prevent a layup, but he instead stays home, resulting in two points. It's not just stationary looks that he's taking advantage of either, there's some real versatility, flaring off of a screen to the deep wing to capitalize on a short window of opportunity, and this time actually being the screener forcing Miami to send two to the ball, which brings Vincent up top, only for him to pull the trigger from extended range anyways. He spotted up just one pass away from Tatum as he pulls in the defense and kicks it to the wing, faking off the catch for a flyby and taking one dribble to step into a much cleaner look, and he's pretty good at pulling off the bounce like this, buckling Struess on a step back to set up a buzzer beating triple. In these off-the-catch situations, he's also a threat to slash, finding an angle down the middle of the lane and pulling up for a little float game. Here it is again, filling out space on the wing as he lifts into a pass and using that momentum to attack a closeout, floating the ball up over Zeller down low. Once more, Brown drives into traffic with no outlet, so White moves to the top of the key to make himself available where he then finds open space to attack the lane, drawing the attention of Bam and laying it down to Rob Will for a three-point play. He's a real sharp passer and decision maker, which allows him to serve as a pretty high-level connector in this offense. Tatum puts the defense into rotation, and White extends the advantage by quickly driving and throwing a pinpoint dime to Brogdon in the corner for three. Remember, back in San Antonio, he had a much heavier on-ball load, and even now in Boston, he shows off some of his skills as a shot creator on occasion, 
but it's almost always within the flow of the offense, and not taking anything off the table from the guys around him. This allows him to complement offensive stars like Tatum and Brown extremely well, as a sort of third or sometimes even a fourth playmaker to attack defenses. And that play, along with what he offers as one of the game's best defensive guards, leaves him an incredibly valuable role player who takes the Boston Celtics to another level. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Garrick White and what your predictions are for the rest of the series. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.